Good morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 294 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Yay! Today, recording day is Thursday, January 11th, 2024, and, um, I'm not quite sure what kind of day it's going to be at the Beaver Lodge. They say a little bit of snow, some rain. It, it's going to be a little messy. Yeah. It's going to be a little messy. I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns, he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A, and with me as always, wearing his kick-ass rain woof t-shirt, is my brother from another mother, Mr. Grizzly. Good day, sir. We Thank have you. a nibble for you today, but before we do anything else, let's do the most important thing we do every day here at the Beaver Lodge, and that's ask Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health doing today, sir? Had to clear Ooh. my throat. Uh, Let you know, me clear my throat. I... You know, last night I had a moment of darkness. It was merely a moment. Uh, it was weird. Sitting on the couch, just reading and going through some existentialism, if you will. Feeling uh, alone, empty, abandoned, lost, uh, out in the woods by myself. You know, just all of the terrible thoughts came rushing in. And I'm like, I have to get out of the house right now. Uh, so I got up, I went for a walk and... Uh, Ran a couple of errands, came back home, lied down for a bit because I had a terrible migraine that came out of nowhere. And then I felt a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, not not great, but the migraine didn't help. So I went to bed relatively early and woke up this morning uh, in, in sort of panic crisis mode. Mm -hmm. It turned on my, I haven't used it. You know those, uh, they call them sad lights. Yes, S -A -D -E -L -I -G -H -T, yes. S-A-D-E-L-I-G-H-T, satellite yes, yes. for seasonal affective disorder. Turn that on because I haven't used that in quite some time because I just, you know, I'm a zombie in the morning. I'm not a, I'm not a wide awake person. So I turned that on, lied in front of that for a few minutes while I was reading, and I thought, okay, I'm, I'm doing much better now. So I got up, poured myself a coffee, got this prepped, did some reading. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not great right now, but I'm not terrible. So Okay. I think I'm moving ahead in the forward direction that I need to be, and that's what matters. I, I'm sure by the end of the show, I'll feel great. Oh, well, um, those sad lights seem to be really quite effective because I've seen yeah. the kids mention them in the, the chat a few times as well. They, they, they really are. They work quite well. And uh, when, when you're, you know, when, when you've had almost no sunlight, as we here in the nation's capital have had, like we had three days in all of December, and I think we've had... Well, we had a bit of sun yesterday, and then yeah. for like 15 minutes, then it clouded over. Then it got sunny, and it clouded over. I mean, we yep. maybe, maybe had two hours of sunshine yesterday. It's just been overcast for what feels like three months. Um, I don't know how many sunny days we had in November. There weren't many. October wasn't terrible, but November, almost none. And December, yep. there was three. 
three sunny days. The rest was overcast. And it wasn't snowing. It was raining or gray and cloudy. And that's just really hard to take. I have friends live in town from Vancouver who were like, oh, man, I feel like I'm back home again. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Just, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, there's a lot of stuff to get into today because um, we've been rather interview heavy, so we've kind of skipped over some news. And unfortunately, the conservatives are behaving like arseholes over and over and over again. And it would be very easy to do shows that are um, strictly how are conservatives being arseholes today? Yeah. So, um, we can unfortunately, do an entire series on that. Yes. So, uh, unfortunately, we do have to get into some, to, into some how conservatives are being arseholes today. Uh, we're going to try and go through it quickly enough because there actually is news. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> there is. But, um, this stuff has to be said. Uh, our um, favorite convoy organizer, mm-hmm. Tamara Litch, or Leach. Ca- uh, the, the trial's on hold again. It went back for one day. It's back on hold again. It's back on hold again, yeah. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, send out an interview to Aidan Helmer, actually, who's the person that's been live blogging for the Ottawa Citizen. Okay. Uh, to try and see if they would come on the show. Because for some reason, I find it extremely surprising that considering how much the convoy captured the attention of the entire nation, Mm -hmm. why is not. Now, that in part has to do with the fact that the trial judge made it such that the trial was not going to be broadcast live to the nation on Zoom, as Mm -hmm. can be done now because rules have been changed in Ontario. And... uh, because of all the pre-trial stuff, I think some of that was on Zoom and there was a lot mm-hmm. of interruptions and people making bozo eruptions from Zoom that was you know, disturbing the actual administration of the trial. Um, the judge, she just said, cut it. Uh, they put it in the largest courtroom, mm-hmm. in Ottawa courtroom number five, so people could come and said, you know, that's enough. But there essentially is, for all intents and purposes, there's one live blogger from Ottawa Citizen, which is a post-media publication, Mm. live blogging it, and that's it. The only time I've heard about it on the news is, in the broader news, to say was when the trial is going to be suspended for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But other coverage? Almost nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. It's uh, it's a little disturbing. It's it's extremely disturbing. This is a central part of our democracy, uh, and, and it's being silenced. And when you compare them to the January 6th trials in the United States that are being mm-hmm. covered left, right, and center. Now, I, I can understand how the judge would go, okay, they're being disruptive. We're going to just take it off Zoom. I'm like, well, you know what you can do about that, right? You can kill the chat and you can kill any participation from gallery. You can close their cameras and you can mute them. So they can't say, they can't say or do a damn thing. Why didn't they just do that? Yep, no, no. But, I know, I work in this field, like you can do these things. Right, no. right, right. But uh, La Tamara has uh, decided that well, she wants to go all in. Mm-hmm. And so when they were saying like, this is, this is a peaceful protest and it was so Don't much love, love and people were helping each other and feeding each other. Okay, it was maybe peaceful among you mm-hmm. who were there. Right? Not but everyone you took hostage not, for about yeah. four weeks, that was not peaceful for everybody that no, missed medical appointments. That was not peaceful for anybody who couldn't cross town or get into downtown to go to work. It wasn't peaceful for everybody that worked at the Rito Center in the area that didn't get to go to work for the better part of three weeks because it was too dangerous. It was not peaceful for the disabled people who lived downtown who couldn't even have food delivered. For corners, it was not I'm in shelter peaceful. who... They, they were harassing the employees and the residents there. Yeah, feed us. Yeah. And the homeless shelters as well. Yes. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, there's something going on behind the, under the screen here, under my little box, that people mm-hmm. can sit on and rotate. Yes. Right? But that Tamara, again, how would you put it, when you talk about the company you keep? Mm-hmm. Mr. Grizzly, take it away. Well, let's just watch this video from Rachel Gilmore. Is Freedom Convoy organizer Tamara Litch speaking at a small conference where the keynote speaker is a Holocaust denier? Sure looks like it. 
Here's what's going on. The circus is coming to the sleepy little town of Eureka, Montana in February. When Tamara Lich is advertised as being one of eight speakers at the event, Darkness Teaches Us to Shine. Where for the cool cost of between $800 and up to $1,500 if you go for the add-ons. Organizer Neil McDougall says you can hear from eight expert speakers, one quarter of whom have either heavily downplayed or outright denied the Holocaust. But if Holocaust denial isn't your bag, they've got a little something for most people who frequent the shadowy corners of the disinformed internet. There's Dr. William Mackis, who's listed as an expert in the completely made-up concept of turbo cancers. You know, the myth spread by anti-vaxxers that has been used to harass cancer patients and their surviving loved ones, despite it being totally made up. Then there's former Democratic Congresswoman Dr. Cynthia McKinney, who previously tweeted that Zionists did 9-11 and has otherwise engaged in truth or conspiracy theories. Also on the list, Dr. E. Michael Jones, who wrote a book alleging the Holocaust is a story and a creation. Then there's keynote speaker Bishop Richard N. Williamson, a guy who Pope John Paul II called to have excommunicated. Not long after it came out that he had said he believes there were no gas chambers. Oh, and in case you thought Neil McDougall had no idea who he was booking for this unhinged conference, here is a podcast interview McDougall conducted in October with Jones and Williamson, in which Williamson refers to the very real and very devastating Holocaust as a quote-unquote myth. On the basis of evidence, as opposed to emotion, the Holocaust is largely a myth. So yeah, come for the conspiracies and Tamara Lich, stay for the anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial. Oh, and of course you won't want to miss the guitar performance from Tamara and Dwayne Lich over charcuterie. What do you think of all this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that just kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? I, I, I've seen the chats. What? Yeah. <laughs> Once again, like like to thank Rachel for her for her, uh, her yeah. wonderful work as a journalist who has a degree in journalism. I'd like to thank her for her wonderful work, and we'd like to continue to promote her wonderful work because. She's a journalist who does journalism that's investigative reporting. Yes, and at great personal risk to herself. Yes. She puts it out there every damn day. I, I have a great deal of respect for Rachel. I don't always see eye to eye with her, but that's, that's I mean, come on. She, that's, you're not going to see eye to eye with everybody, period. Mm -hmm. I don't. But I, I love her work. I love the fact that she is dedicated to getting facts and truth to the Canadian public, which is what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Sadeka says, I adore Rachel. I wish her and Karima would get along better. I was just the same thing. Uh, you yeah. know, once or twice uh, on Twitter, I also, you know, sent to Rachel a message. I'm like, mm, I'm not sure about that. Um, mm -hmm. But <sighs> mm -hmm. recent, well, recently, like the last year and a lot, Mm -hmm. um, she's not just knocking it out of the park. Agreed. Left, right, and center. And, um, and she, uh, she made uh, like, I mean, uh, from a, on a personal perspective, personal sort of input, if you will, she, she kind of, uh, I don't know if she made fun of me or chuckled about me or thought I was being over the top ridiculous. And I saw her commentary. I'm like, well, you know, you weren't there. So yeah, again, uh, no, no disrespect to you, Rachel. I love your work. I think you do a wonderful job. Uh, and I like the fact that you're a real journalist practicing journalism. So thank you for your, your service. And she is welcome on the show anytime. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. And, and anybody who knows us, we're kind to all of our guests. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good morning, Kit Elaine, Kit Cassie, Kit Dan, Kit Ellen. Thank you for joining us. Kit Linda M, Kit Hugh, Kit One Nick the Stick. I'm not sure if that's somebody that's joined us before who changed their handle or new name for us, but if you're a new name, welcome to the Beaver Lodge. We hope that you love welcome. it here. Pull up a log, stay a while, get comfy. Uh, who else that. do we have joining us today? Kit Tabby G, hello, dear one. So lovely to see you. And who else? Kit Vim, hello. Bonjour, ma chère. J'espère que tu vas très bien. And who else do we have here with this? Miss Sadeka, of course, who we just mentioned. Uh, Kit Wishful Son, hey, hello. It's been a while. Nice to see you. All right. So we have Tamara Lich hanging around with Holocaust deniers and turbo cancer promoters 
and then oh and good morning from mademoiselle fox hello 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 and well or madame fox now i don't know what you're saying <laughs> madame fox do you know samantha <laughs> touch me touch me now i want to have some fun ah, i loved her <laughs> for yeah, she was so did i but for she a different was reason than you did well yes <laughs> she was popular nowhere nowhere no more pop sorry popular nowhere more than in the province of quebec for some reason yes. on the entire planet yeah it's true i actually I mean, saw her was... live in concert at la Ronde. well she was a, a page three girl in the sun in london england not uh, the ottawa sun not the toronto mm -hmm. sun not the sun chain of newspapers which is now owned by post media which is chatham asset management which is 66 percent owned by american hedge fund gop right-wing evangelical group okay got that out of the way uh yeah <laughs> she she was a, a sun girl and in the london sun the sun girl uh was a woman to begin with not a girl a woman because uh, if you put a topless girl in your newspaper on page three oh yeah uh -huh. and they the, the Sun Girls in the London Sun were always topless, by mm -hmm. the way. Mm -hmm. So on the third page of the newspaper, you had a topless woman. Not a girl. That would be perverted and illegal. But they called them the Sun Girls. So anyway. Yeah. Right. And in other um, interesting <laughs> conservative news, it appears that following the whole... How did we go down this foxhole, Mr. Grizzly? <laughs> but I'm just, I love wordplay. Um, following my, 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 the my whole beloved thing. Is a writer, so. Yes. Following the whole thing with uh, David Menzies yesterday mm -hmm. when it came out that not only uh, did Mr. Menzies attack, well, attack. Uh, try to be very aggressive with Minister Freeland in a manner similar that he's been very aggressive with Melissa Lantzman mm -hmm. and Andrew Shear. And uh, unfortunately, um, well, unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, Melissa Lantzman has me blocked because mm -hmm. as a fellow rainbow person, I keep on calling her out on her betrayal of our community and she did not like that. Um, but Andrew Scheer, um, he posted in defense mm -hmm. of David Menzies, the guy that he had arrested. <laughs> yeah. I, like, I don't know if he specifically called the cops, well, no. but arrested on his behalf. Did. Yes. I doubt he did any of and, that. It was definitely on his behalf. Yes. Same and as same it was thing, for Christopher well, Freeland. And same thing as for Melissa Latzman says, yes. I did not call the police when she had her statement Correct. back in the 2021. Um, but it seems that people within the conservative ranks suddenly discovered, I guess, that mm -hmm. Melissa Lansman was a lesbian wow. and a conservative wow. at the same time. And out came the purity testers, particularly someone named Josh. And then Should, Brett. Uh... Well, it's from Brett, Brett, Brett underscore Sears, yeah. uh, blue check. Uh, yeah. What do they call that? Eight, eight buck chuckle. Anyway, yep. uh, should Pierre Polyev fire his LGBTQ diversity hire Melissa Lanceman as deputy leader of the CPC because she had the menzoid arrested on false pretenses previously in a way very similar to the Canada or the, the Christian Freeland situation. And notice uh, 598 votes, 81% yes, 19% no. And notice the image. Mm, What's the image under the yes or right beside the no? A it's a chocolate chip cookie. That's from the cookie lady, though. She puts that there. Uh, yes, yeah. it's the cookie lady who reposted. She always puts cookies on it. Okay. So yeah. that wasn't from them. Okay. because No, that was not from them. No, but, it's the uh, cookie okay. lady who posted okay. this. Because I thought it was them a reference to Jennifer Johnson's no, thing no. about Okay. No, no. No, no, okay. no. That's sometimes yes. things get taken out of context. This is the cookie lady who posts this. Yes. And of course, Josh Alexander, that um, oh so great Christian, yes. as he likes to say, get the perverted sodomites out. Well, to begin with, Melissa Lanceman is a lesbian, so there's no sodomy happening, probably for her, I'd imagine. But then again, you know, you know. And uh, 
and let's and, and let's remind people um i've seen enough of those movies that used to be hidden behind the curtain mm-hmm. back in the days when we had to have video stores to uh be able to confirm to all these people that uh sodomy is not a strictly homosexual thing no it's not just saying just saying yeah anyway yeah, there's there's a whole swath of the yes. internet dedicated but to Josh is correct, sodomy. and I applaud him for having the stones to say it. Landsman does not have Canada's best interest at heart, and many think she's the one really stirring the CBC. Good to know you're pro sodomy, Blaine. Ha 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 ha. And then this Valerian, who apparently has an avatar, I don't know if that's actually him, mm-hmm. and identifying himself as black, um, had some stuff about uh, not only getting the gays, but. Uh, the pro-ethnics or something out as well. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Uh, if you actually are black, you, and also Leslie and Lewis, have you looked in a mirror lately? Yeah. I'll just see. saying. Stroll right. down here to see And then some keep more that, yeah, that one. Comments. No, it's not. More Josh Blair, Alexander. Yeah. Looks like I've kicked the hornet's nest with the conservative movement. The Melissa Lansman you support is the same one who refused to speak out against radical gender ideology. Now the thing had instead flaunted the international banner of children's mutilation. Because, you know, transgender people, if they decide to go all the way with gender reassignment surgery or not, even just get top surgery mm-hmm. and not the full thing, apparently mm-hmm. that's children's mutilation. I guess uh, let, let, let's not, but but let's not talk about just basic circumcision of boys. Right, right. We'll just uh, we'll just gloss right over. We'll just that. Although apparently that, that doesn't get done nearly as often anymore. Apparently. No, it doesn't as much anymore. Shall we move on to the next? Yeah, this is the one. There we go. That's the one I saw, Valerian. Valerian. May God extend His hands to protect you. She is backed by the alphabets and the ethnicity lobby. Again, if that avatar actually is you, check a mirror, baby. Yeah, you, 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 people, leopards eating people's face party. They're going to yeah. eat your face. Yeah. So uh, the cookie lady there is, um, and then, of course, within the movement, mm-hmm. you have people going, and that's why I stopped following you and Chris. Can you expand on that? You know what? Never mind. I think you've said enough. So the alt, what's being called as alt-right gaze. Again, mm-hmm. rejecting gender ideology. Gender identity ideology and queer theory are homophobic, and many LGBs are fighting this fight. This attitude and these comments are counterproductive and make people think that these narratives that were bigots are true. Please stop. You are, Blanche. You yeah. are. Because when you talk about LGBs and you decide to exclude the T's, mm-hmm. that's bigotry, my friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then more. The homosexuals aren't the problem, Josh. I thought you were a good guy until this comment. How disappointing. So, as we've been talking about, and it just keeps going on and on, but as we've been talking about within the Arab community, when they were protesting against trans kids and the right to just be able to be called what it is they're called, a basic fundamental, not even like human right, but just sign of respect. I prefer mm-hmm. to be called Douglas when we're talking about my real name, not Doug, not Dougie. Mm-hmm. I prefer to be referred to as he. I guess with my gay friends, if we're camping it up, yeah, okay, maybe she in that case, but right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but come on. Yeah. Right. Like just people saying, hey, this is what I'd like to be referred to. That's it. That was enough to set them off. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. I, I, and then they were protesting, and then they're saying, "Oh, well, you know, our Christian friends." Like this. And then the war with Israel and Gaza started up, and then whoops! Oh, where are your friends now? Under the bus. We said this would happen. We said we told you this would happen. Alt right gaze again. Mm. Yes. Keep, we keep on telling you this for years. Watch out with whom you associate. These people are not your friends. Your devotion to your conservative cause and your whiteness will not save you from that which the patriarchy has in store for you eventually. Yep. 
It just means they're saving you for last because you're useful idiots. And then you come back to us and you say that we're hateful and that we're divisive and that we're mean and that we're cruel. And then you finally find out that the leopard face eating party is licking your face, getting a little sample. Mm, see what you taste like before they're going to have munch. And then all of a sudden you go, ah, like this. And we keep on telling you, we weren't trying to put you down. We were just trying to help. We were trying to warn you. We are not anti-conservative. Actual conservatives were anti arsehole Yes. Uh, how does the song go? It's all just a little bit of history repeating. Yes. Sure. This happened. and the propeller heads. Great tune, by the way. Yes, it is. Uh, this happened in the 1930s in Germany when prominent members of the Jewish community contributed and, and worked alongside the Nazis, picking out the poorer members of the society, picking on the members that could not, you know, the marginalized people who could not defend themselves. And once they got rid of all those folks, well, guess who they went for next? This is how this works, folks. When we tell you, you are causing harm to yourself by working with people that don't want you to exist because they don't. You will be the next one to be sacrificed. That's how it works. This, how is, works. this is not new. I feel like we need Celine Dion, People Bryson. Tale as old as time. There's a playbook, people. Yeah, and this is uh, the, the document you just sent me is, yep. here we go. Have a look at this, folks. This is the thing. It's a comic book. Well, a comic a cartoon. Mm -hmm. There are two gay people, essentially, shaking hands. One is saying, we did it. We finally outlawed all the trans people and drag queens. Thanks for your help. And the well, sorry, not two gay people. One, I guess, alt right person, and then mm. a gay person. With a red hat. That's, yeah, red hat, and a gay person holding up a sign, rainbow sign, saying "Gays Against Dry Queens" with the T-shirt saying "LGB" without the T. Happy to be of service. And then the guy holding the sign that says "Gays Against Dry Queens" LGB without the T. So, who are we going after next? Blank stare. From the I red said, hat. who's next? Blank stare from the red hat. Who? Blank stare from the red hat. That would be you. This is the playbook, folks. We're not making this up. This has happened before. If you are not ever vigilant, it will happen again. We're watching it play out in real time. They will come for you next. This is not rocket surgery. Yes, I said that intentionally. That was a Rickyism, not rocket yeah. appliances. I just <sighs> they will come for you next. It's as simple as that. If you hate one, you hate all. Mm -hmm. Hate is a cancer. It spreads. If you are hateful, once the thing you hate has been eliminated, you still need to hate. Because you're hateful. That's how it works. It's not complicated. As we keep on saying, these people are not your friends. They are not your friends. People who lie to you to make a point. People who exploit your suffering, your fear, your current misery in order to Here's get ahead. They are not your friends. People who lie to you about other people, they are not your friends. People like Spencer Fernando from the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, who every day point to the next person that you should hate. They are not your friends. And speaking of that, if the Canadian Tax Federation actually were a serious organization, they too 
would be looking at Mr. Spencer Fernando's feed and private personal Facebook page and be saying, dude, what you are doing on your own time is giving such a bad name to our organization. You can't keep working for us anymore and representing us. But the Canadian Taxpayers Federation are not, aren't about taxes, nor Canadians. And not much of a federation. Discuss. All. There's only six of them. Five or six of them. Didn't we talk about that last week? But, but there's but there's a membership like this that because they get money. This, except the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, which always demands transparency on taxes, won't be transparent about who's on their membership list. Mm. Again. Uh, and speaking of this guy, just because we mentioned it a little bit yesterday, but oh, I probably got rid of it now because it's, yeah, anyway, he had a picture yesterday, I think, or the other day, um, and it had, um, I think it was a newspaper article, and it had uh, the Prime Minister shaking hands with Jagmeet Singh if I'm not mistaken, uh, and said something about us being sold out to a certain group of people. And it's just completely disgusting. And this Twitter feed has essentially become this. I mean, we had the talk the other day about Mr. Angus Reed and how he's using his personal Twitter feed but then he's still talking about, he still has his organization. And mm. I'm like, how does this reflect well on your business? Oh, it does not. And why would anybody, I mean, yet still people, people are still doing business with him. Uh, I'm wondering if he, uh, Fernando took it down. Is it gone? Uh, I cannot seem to find it on his feed right now. Mm. Which, you know, would be good because it was pretty horrible. I do not, yeah, I do not see it. I think he did. I think he, I think he might have taken it down. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. I mean, if they can't, I just, these people are just too much. Too much. All right. Uh, that's the how conservatives are being a bunch of dicks today <laughs> portion of the show. We'll move along. Let's move it along, shall we? Yeah. Because Do you have anything positive for me this morning? Uh, well. Probably not. <laughs> I'm, 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 I don't know about positive, uh, but in actual news mm. <laughs> because you know there is a world going on out there one of the yes. things uh, that we keep on mentioning or that i keep on mentioning on the show is when we're talking about um the conservative opposition to carbon pricing and it is carbon pricing not carbon taxes tax. really as defined by the supreme court of canada by the way in its ruling that the province of alberta brought all the way and actually did lose completely, totally, without any equivocation, total loss. Mm -hmm. Well, we keep on saying they want you to get mad about something that adds 0.03% to inflation so that you do not notice what's going on with your insurance, <laughs> for example. Well, two days ago in the CBC. As weather-related disasters mount, some Canadian homeowners can't get insurance coverage. Insured losses top $3.1 billion for the second straight year, according to the Insurance Bureau of Canada. I believe we talked about that some time ago, whereas in the state of California, you can't insure a new home. Uh -huh. It's uninsurable. Yep. Like private, Which means, private companies, the state will have to come up with something, basically, is what's going to yep. boil down to. Yeah, but, and it probably won't be anywhere near full value to your home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your investment in your home, which in for in Canada, a lot of people is essentially their retirement fund. Right. More and more and more, 
your annual insurance premiums are jumping, jumping, and jumping. And fewer and fewer people are actually going to be able to actually get insurance. So therefore, if there is a fire or a flood or a tornado or an earthquake, and the federal government comes in with some type of compensation to help you, yeah, you'll get a little something, probably will not replace the value of your home, and then you still need to find a place to live. Well, and, In a and, country where the premiers are not building homes. And, and let, let's, let's remember, how many of these folks, when they get their uh, state-funded insurance uh, by the province, because private insurance companies will no longer insure new home builds, so you have to go to the state, and then a terrible tragedy happens and you lose your home to a wildfire or perhaps a tornado. And then uh, you will scream and rant and rave about how much you hate socialism, but thank goodness you had your provincial funded hel- uh, <laughs> homeowner's insurance. Yep. You know that's going to happen. Yep. Insurance claims- I'm calling it right now. You're going to hear it. It's yep. going to happen. Insurance claims from extreme weather in 2023 were the fourth highest total on record, according to a new report by the Insurance Board of Canada. Well, the report underscores concerns about the growing economic costs of weather related disasters made more frequent and severe by climate change and the rising costs of insurance coverage for homeowners. But don't ask the conservatives to talk about that because they want you to focus on the carbon tax. They want you to be mad about that, not yeah. about the fact that you can't get insurance because they've done sweet fuck all to help you on climate and, change. Yeah. And they have no intention to either. But shh, because conservatives don't tell them conservative friends. Shh. Didn't we both pile on Sarah Fisher yesterday about her railing on about homes? <laughs> yep, absolutely. Absolutely. According to the report, the wildfires in Shushwap in Okanagan, B.C. were far and away the costly source of insurance claims. But a mix of storms, flooding, and fires across the country contributed to what amounted the fourth prices year for insurance losses. It's important to note that these losses are coming from not any one single type of event, said Craig Stewart, the group's vice president of climate change and federal issues. They're coming from floods, from wildfires, from hailstorms, from hurricanes, and literally they're happening from coast to coast. And they're escalating. And you could say coast to coast to coast. Because Northwest mm. Territories got affected as well. I'm not sure it yes, went all did. the way up to the Arctic Ocean. but Well, that they, they uh, or Arctic sea, evacuated 45,000 people from, from uh, was it Northwest Territories? Yes. Yeah. Not Nunavut, yeah. but Northwest Territories. Yeah. Northwest Territories, yeah. In all, four of the five priciest years on record adjusted for inflation have been in the past decade, with the only exception being 1998, the year of the devastating ice storm in Quebec. While wildfires wreaked havoc on many communities, the summer flooding remains the costliest weather-related event. The high likelihood of flooding in some areas has made insurance companies reluctant to offer the coverage. People are frankly living on floodplains across the country, he said. That's... Uh, Mr. Stewart from the uh, the vice president of the insurance uh, group. We're already seeing a shift in the insurance market for flooding. There are about 1.5 million homes across the country that simply cannot get affordable flood insurance today. We're only 40 million people and we don't live in 40 million homes. No. So I'm not sure how many homes there are in Canada specifically. But let's know. say two per home, considering some have three or four as a rough number. So let's say there are 20 million homes, 1.5 million of them. That's almost 10%, 15%. This, can't um, get, can't get it. This, this statement from, from Re Sansi C, which my insurance costs 500 a month, big old house, apparently set to unlimited replacement costs been looking around but no one is willing to insure an old house it's all old houses in nova scotia five hundred dollars a month holy hannah okay and while that's a yes and here's the thing while the conservatives are trying to get you really pissed off about carbon pricing that adds 0.03 percent to inflation here's the kicker on the whole home insurance and mortgage insurance have climbed an average of 33 percent over the mm. five-year period from april 1st 2018 to the same month in 2023 according to statistics canada they want you to be mad about 0.3 percent zero or 0.03 percent so that you forget 
about the 33% that they're helping to cause by deciding to be unhelpful in every single freaking way possible. And then they'll turn around and blame Justin Trudeau for all of the problems of the world. Stewart's group has been pressing the federal government to put in place a national flood insurance program. Ah, yes, of course. Because the insurance companies don't want to pay for it anymore. So let's just slap that on to all of us. So now all of us as taxpayers are now expected to take care of flood insurance. But uh, where's the Canadian Taxpayers Federation on that? Well, Where's the no. conservatives about well, incredible deficitory spending that contributes to inflation? See, I, I have no problem with a state-funded home insurance uh, flood Neither protection. And, and, and this is something that will never, I will never be affected by it. I'm on the sixth floor. If I have a flood on the sixth floor, well, it's because the polar ice caps have melted and we're all going to die. Yes, but if there's still I'm, a I'm flood up on, on a the hill. First- on the sixth floor. Yeah. But if there's still a flood on the first or second floor, the, st- integra- the structural yes. integrity of the building might be affected. Y- correct. Correct. But, but you, you get what I'm, you get yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. That what I'm sense. saying, I'm happy for my taxes to contribute to a program that will benefit the vast majority of Canadians. Like, oh, I don't know, universal health care. But, so, and this is the thing with the conservatives, right? Come on, saying. Trudeau's deficit story spending, but when it comes to health care, they wanted him to just fork over $28 billion to the provinces. Like, that wouldn't be deficit story spending. They won't lift a finger to spend a cent to help fight climate change. Mm-hmm. But if they have to take on 33% over the last five years, and that's only going to be rising mm-hmm. if we don't actually address climate change. And Let's be honest, there's about 25 years of increasing climate change damage that's already baked into the cake. Oh, yeah. Because that whole concept of bending the curve that we learned about with COVID, well, that applies. It's all bad. That applies to greenhouse gas reductions and methane emissions. And we know we can do it because we did it with acid rain. And we also did it with protecting the ozone layer. So it can be done. Because we've done it before. We just have to do it. But we have an entire movement that's basically thrown itself on the floor and has made itself dead weight and is expecting all of us to pull it along as we are trying to tell Mother Nature, hey, hey, yo, yo, calm down. We'll get it right. Mother Nation. Mother Nature has lost patience, and she does not negotiate. Mother Nature is essentially a two-year-old or a three-year-old. I want a cookie. You can't have a cookie now. I want a cookie. It's not good for your health. I want a cookie. You need to eat your broccoli first. I want a cookie. Mother Nature doesn't negotiate. She don't care about your feelings. You need to do the work. We need to do the work. And people who are being unhelpful. And again, you know, if you don't want to help, that's one thing. There's that expression, lead, follow, or get the out of the way. Oh, yeah. Yes. But these people don't choose lead, follow, or get the out of the way. They choose, let's put sticks in your spokes. And then blame the prime minister for it. <laughs> it's just... Joanna Kanga, a spokesperson for the Ministry of Minister of Emergency Preparedness, said the federal government, quote, continues to engage provinces and territories, industry stakeholders, and indigenous representatives on the development and implementation of the low-cost flood insurance program. It's not going to be low-cost. No, it won't. It's not going to be low-cost. Four of the largest years of insurance claims. Now, of course, these are all disasters combined. This have happened in the last 10 years. And again, as the report says, none more costly than flood. 
Well, and, and rising, pun not intended. Well, and here in the nation's capital, within a five-year cycle, we had the once-in-a-century, hundred-year flood twice. Twice. Oh, and, and actually, we had it prior to that 50 years ago. So we've had three once-in-a-century floods within a 50-year time period. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the federal government has announced its first climate adaptation strategy just last, uh, not last November, November 2022. So that's how late to the game we are. Mm. All right. And that climate uh, strategy um, was two years in the making. It was released in Prince Edward Island mm. around the time, well, after having felt the brunt of Hurricane Fiona. Right. The strategy envisages the country prepared to deal with the worst impacts of climate change. The high level document talked about multiple targets, but didn't provide any hard numbers at the time. The government said that its goal was to set the stage for more detailed implementation plans to be rolled out later. They announced $1.6 billion over five years in new funding to help jumpstart the work that needs to be done. And the money is meant to improve disaster response, protect Canadians from extreme heat and health effects, and top out the Disaster Mitigation and Adaptation Fund. These are all social programs that the Conservative Party claims they do not believe in, by the way. Yeah. The funding required from the public and private sectors to address the impact of climate change in Canada at the time in 2022 was estimated to be $5.3 billion a year. And that's $5.3 billion a year that's not spent on health right. or education or Public infrastructure. Public infrastructure or helping you with cost of living, mm -hmm. according to the Insurance Bureau of Canada. But, the, well, but once again. the conservatives who say they're conservatives don't believe in big government spending programs and will provide you with a tax cut, which just means they've privatized a public service to save you a couple of bucks in taxes on your paycheck. Now you're going to pay through the nose for that private for-profit service that Alberta has seen when it comes to electrical services, you know, because they don't have much in the way. They have one hydro generating station in the entire province of Alberta. One. One. And they're trying to screw that one up too yep. by allowing fracking within a certain distance of it. Which would cause it to collapse that, and flood. <laughs> flood and flooding so massive that it could probably even affect the city of Edmonton. That's right. The, the, these people are not conservatives. They're reformers with a narrow vision when it comes to finances. I'm going to save you $10 on your paycheck. Meanwhile, that province where you get your electricity that used to be affordable has gone up by 140%. Yeah. And then you got Danielle Smith with his, her latest video going, Albertans are problem solvers. Well, not only Albertans are problem solvers. Steve, the federal government's Electricity regulation things are going to make electricity un unaffordable. Electricity is already 140% higher than it was year over year, and the federal government had nothing to do with that. That was all you. In Alberta. That was all you, Danielle. <laughs> and then you kneecapped the renewable sector yeah. while you're at it. These are not smart people. They are puppets. Because all the electricity is funded with natural gas and you want more natural gas for base load power rather than making the damn change. You say the climate, the, the targets are unattainable. They are not unattainable. And then you go in and that screed video saying that we want to ban electric, car, we want to ban gas cars. It's not true. There's no plan to ba ban, ban, there's no plan to ban gas cars. There's a plan to phase out the production of gas cars in favor of electric. Nobody's going to come and take your gas car. We're not taking your, your, your truck away. Okay. We're not taking and your gun away. We're not taking your either. hamburgers. <laughs> we're not take coming for your hamburgers either. Nope. Or, or your gas stove. We're not taking that away either. Literally lies, lies, lies. 
Economic analysis, that's back in 2022, shows the impacts of climate change will be severe even if the world does not exceed the international goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. A recent United Nations report warned that the failure of individual nations to cut their emissions is, quote, leading our planet to at least 2.5 degrees warming, a level deemed catastrophic by scientists at the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. But don't look up. Don't look up. The Canadian Climate Institute estimates that by 2025... That's next year. The impact of climate change could cut economic growth by $25 billion annually. I thought the conservatives were all about economic growth, but I guess not. More recently, the parliamentary budget officer estimated that even if the world meets its emissions reduction commitments, Canada's real GDP will take a 5.8% hit in 20, well, 2100. A lot of us probably won't be alive for that. I, I, that's... that's uh... It's a long ways off. I'm, I don't think I'm going to live to be 130. Yeah. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> you know, if I live to be 130 and I can stay status quo like this, okay, sure, I'll give it a go. Something tells me that's not going to happen. Exactly. Insurance losses reflect just a small part of the damage caused by extreme weather and highlight the need for governments to put more money into adaptation measures, which we were just talking about, said Ryan Ness, a research director with the Canadian Climate Institute. A report by that institute estimated that every dollar invested in climate adaptation, such as designing roads to make them more resistant to flooding, will return 13 to $15 in avoided costs. But that's woke money. So it doesn't count. According to conservatives, yeah, right, right, right. quote, a small investment, a small amount of investment upfront can pay for itself many, many, many times over. And conservatives will not do it. No, of course not. They just bring their can't do attitude. No, yeah, it's like, we, it's like, you want to die by 2035, we can do it by 2050. That's 15 more years. Of putting pressure on Mother Nature, who I just told you does not frickin' negotiate. What part of this can you not understand? Do you remember the, uh, was it 1990 when Earth Day became a thing again? Because Earth Day started in 1970 under Richard Nixon. When Earth Day became a thing again back in 19, I think it was 90 or 91, and we talked about we have 10 years to save this planet, reduce, reuse, recycle, switch to this, switch to that, blah, 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 blah. That's 34 years ago, friends. Mm -hmm. We made some differences, not nearly enough. I'm going to put a link in the chat to a video clip, which we cannot show because we'll get tagged for copyright, but this was from the newsroom, and it was a scene in 2014. And Mother yes, Jones, remember you remember that one? Mother yep. Jones uh, fact-checked it. And basically everything in that article is accurate. It's not 100% accurate. There's a couple things here and there that are, are kind of, you know, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, artistic license. Yeah. But for the most part, it's uh, accurate. And the scene, if you've never seen it, if you've never seen the scene... The character, <laughs> the character talks about how uh, uh, it was the guy who played Toby on The Office. And in mm -hmm. the scene, he discusses how we're already past the point of no return. And he's like, wait a minute, we're, we're going into the weekend. Can we get some positive news here for the folks as they start their weekend off? He goes, no, we're done. We're finished. He goes, are you going to get in trouble for this? He goes, who cares? <laughs> we're, we're done. It's not an exaggeration. You know the you know the cartoon where it has the the kids sitting on the side of the street and say, "Well, you know, we did destroy the planet, but we did you know increase some funds for some investors for shareholders." For a brief time, it was glorious. Yes. Uh, when you yeah. see the dinosaurs and the meteors coming, oh no, the economy. <laughs> um, another news. We've talked about this on the show before, about uh, listing the IRGC as a terrorist organization. Yeah. Okay. Part of uh, that whole David Menzies thing had something to do with that. Mm -hmm. Right. You have um, Troliev. <laughs> That's a good one. I like hey. that. 
Truly have. <sighs> Tweeting the other day, on the 7th, so a terrorist group murders 55 Canadians and four years later Trudeau refuses to ban them, allowing the IRGC to legally recruit, raise money, and plan other violence in our country. What is wrong with him? Now that was the fourth anniversary of the downing of Flight 752 over Iran. Mm -hmm. For which Iran is still not accepting responsibility and, you know, fighting any action there. And we've talked about how experts, such as Professor Thomas Junot, a former Middle East analyst for the Department of National Defense, says that this would be very difficult to do because Iran has conscription for military service. Which means you would have to put everyone That's right. on that terrorist list. Every single Which would make it, and if you do that, then you basically have a program that means nothing. Mm -hmm. Action for action's sake is also one of the 14 signs of fascism, by the way. Or characteristics of fascism, according to philosopher Umberto Eco. The prime minister, however, is having some pressure, so... He was quoted as saying at an event, but we know there's more to do to hold the regime to account and we will continue our work, including continuing to look for ways to responsibly list the IRGC as a terrorist organization and explore any and other all options. So notice the words to responsibly list. It means it's not going to happen, folks. <laughs> now, the federal government did list the Kutz Force and listed certain members of the RGC, which we have also communicated to you on our show in the past. But to enforce a full terrorist ban on the whole thing, not sure how it's going to happen. Even though the families of the victims of Flight 752 have been asking for this, as they would, because they have suffered a tragedy. And once again, we're talking about conservatives exploring, exploiting the tragedy and the misery and the pain of others mm -hmm. for clicks and donations so that they can posture and pose. 14 U.S. congressmen, both Republican and Democrat, wrote the PM last month asking him to do it. Pierre Podiev has been unequivocal on this. You have to do it. Quote, the RGC is the most sophisticated, well-financed terrorist group on planet Earth. It is a disgrace. Donald Trump word, that they have not been a terrorist group in Canada. The PM is failing to stand up and defend the people of Canada. This is a play. Remember when he claimed terrorist attack when that car went boom? And the next day he went into that synagogue to talk about the RRGC mm -hmm. again? And how can this was a play? This is a trope of his. Oh, yes, of course it is. The prime minister is not keeping us safe. Now, the government of Canada Bring home is seeking... security. Mm-hmm. Government of Canada is seeking justice through ICAO, which is the International Civil Aviation Organization, which is one of the 33 mm -hmm. UN organizations that's actually headquartered in Canada, right, right in Montreal, downtown Montreal, and is asking Iran to take full legal responsibility. And of course, Iran's going, la, 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 la. Well. Yes. And there's been a case launched in the International Court of Justice. Okay. Now, as we pointed out on this show before, Ah, uh, Mr. Grizzly, I'm going to give you a little tweet here. Mm -hmm. The reason why this is particularly hypocritical on the part of the Conservative Party of Canada, and particularly its current leader, the shit gibbon in chief, mm -hmm. is because, and we pointed this out before, but given that we have new people to the show since then, let's point it out again, that um, when Pierre Padiev says, what is wrong with you? I think you mean what's wrong with you, don't you? Because you were asked to do it in 2009 and you didn't get it done. February 9th, Feb December 9th, 2009, Liberal Foreign Affairs critic Bob Ray stated that, Mr. Grizzly? The Liberal Party of Canada, through the Honorable Bob Ray, official opposition critic for foreign affairs, and Mark Holland, official opposition critic for public safety, safety has called on the government to designate the IRGC as a terrorist organization immediately. Bob Ray, the government's decision to list the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Quads, Quads? Quds Force. Quds Force under Canada's Anti-Terrorism Act is long overdue, but still falls short of comprehensive action. 
For years, the Liberal Party of Canada has joined with communities across Canada, calling on the Harper Conservatives to list the entire IRGC as a terrorist entity, and this government still refuses to do so. December 4th, 2009. Liberal public safety critic Mark Holland stated that it's time for Canada to speak out against the IRGC and push the rest of the world to follow. We strongly urge the Harper government to make this official designation immediately. Mm -hmm. And in that uh, article, that, that little article as well, I'll try to find the link. Um, there was also in 2012, Erwin Kotler, but, but, who you're hearing about today, also in the news, because he's been quoted mm -hmm. today with regards to Israel and Gaza. But Honorable Erwin Kotler, who was our Minister of Justice, I believe, I guess, and has a pretty impeccable record when it comes to his stances on human rights. It is regrettable that Canada continues to dither with regard to listing it as a terrorist entity. I introduced legislation in this regard several years ago and have called on the Canadian government to list the IRGC as a terrorist entity both in question period and during the House debate. Debate. Frankly, the IRGC's well-documented international criminality should have been evidence enough of the need for the Canadian government to act. So there was even a lot bill mm -hmm. presented. And I'm going to put this. And who voted against that? Mm -hmm. The Conservative Party of Canada. The people who are calling on the government now to do something they did not do in 2009. Well, like this. And skipping. in 2012, when they were asked, they know why it can't be done. Mm -hmm. He knows why he cannot be done because he was on the benches when to in 2009 and 2012 when this was done and then if you look at this nothing for seven years and then suddenly in 2019 boom oh then you got conservatives basically <laughs> yeah they ignored it ignored it ignored it now all of a sudden see they were asked to do it. Yeah. This is why it's bullshit when you see Pierre Polyev all over TV. Let's point out his, his it, it's just a distraction. It's just a distraction. They were asked to do it in 2009. That is six years before Justin Trudeau was the prime minister. They did nothing then. They didn't get it done. And now they're calling on this government to get it done. Knowing that and it can't be. they know why. They know why. It can't be done. That's the level. So please, share this episode with everyone you meet the next time somebody brings up, why isn't Justin Trudeau doing anything about the IRGC? Because they can't. It's been called on for, what's that, 15 years now? 15 years? Yeah. And yeah. nothing's been done because it can't. You can't label well, every single living, breathing person in a country a terrorist because Iran has, like you say, conscription. If you are capable of serving, you serve. But and it's not like you got much choice. It's Iran. You do it. Yeah. What are you going to say? No. Mm -mm. Iran does not take no for an answer. So guess what? You can't label every citizen a terrorist. You simply cannot do that. Especially if they're being involuntarily <laughs> conscripted. Yeah. As Kit Hughes says, and Kit, no, Kit Hughes, because he's a military historian, collective punishment is illegal. The Conservative Government, Conservative Party of Canada is actually asking the government of Canada to violate international law. Mm-hmm. And they're fundraising. If you're a donor to the Conservative Party based on this cause, they're actually taking money out of your wallet because they are upset that the federal government will not violate international law. You're being fleeced. Yep. Here, Grandma, we know that you're not really capacitated right now, so just sign your name on this document right here. Oh, yeah. This is the type of people you're dealing with. Stop giving them your money. Mm -hmm. 
They don't care about you. Do not give money that would ask grandma to sign away her bank account. <laughs> Just saying. This, this comment from PNC Bio. You can't ban an organization that people are forced to serve. The IDF is bombing refugee camps. Do we ban Israelis? That's crazy. That's the other thing. Israel has a conscription. Everyone does military service in Israel if you are capable of doing it. Mm. Same thing in Switzerland, by the way. Yes. And speaking of Israel and the International Court of Justice, where the government of Canada is trying to pursue Iran, it seems that the nation of South Africa mm -hmm. starts today, doesn't is it? taking Israel to court mm -hmm. for what's going on right, right now at the International Court of Justice. And the government of Israel is, of course, calling this blood libel. I'm wondering, I'm wondering now, and I'm, I'm just pondering. So you know how the end of apartheid was brought about. Uh, largely because the U.S. finally signed on and then one country didn't and then it finally did. In the yep. end, it capitulated. And you know who started all of that. It was Joe Clark. Mm -hmm. Canadian Joe Clark started the Let's End Apartheid movement by creating embargoes and, and banning dealing with South Africa. And, and Mulroney saw it through. Correct. And stood up to Thatcher. That's right. And the Americans were the last to hop on board. And once we got them on board, we knew, okay, it's only a matter of time now because they're the most powerful country in the world. There's no denying it. They are. Yep. If you've ever heard a song called I Ain't Gonna Play Sun City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was... Which uh, was one of those big collective songs again with a whole bunch of artists little singing Stevie. a little bit sort of like We Are The World and all that kind of stuff. That's what that was about. Yeah, little Steven from uh, the E Street Band who was also on The Sopranos and uh, Lilyhammer. Uh, yep. and, and he... He didn't know what was going on. He's like, I'm just a guy from Jersey who plays guitar. And then he, he was told, you know, if you play Sun City, you're, you're contributing to the apartheid and blah, blah. Anyway, he wrote this song and Bono has a great line in it. And they we're stabbing each other. We stabbing our brothers and sisters in the back. And he's right. So artists united against apartheid. That's when the American yes. government got on board. When they're like, okay, we're being embarrassed now by our own people. Let's do something about it. But here's where I'm going with South Africa. And I'm speculating and pondering because Israel was the very last country to sign on to end apartheid. And a matter of fact, they begrudgingly did it. And it was quite literally like three or four days before apartheid fell because mm -hmm. Israel said, no, we're not signing on. We're dealing with diamonds and shit. I'm like, do you realize that you're talking about a government that would subjugate your entire nation? So is this because, you know, apartheid is gone and who's in power? The majority of South Africans who don't look like me, by the way, the majority of South Africans, I think, is this a revenge plot? Is this kind of, you supported apartheid, we're getting you back. I'm just asking questions. According to the BBC, um, Israel's plan to destroy, quote, Gaza comes from, quote, the highest level of state, the UN's top court has heard. The claims were made by South African lawyers as it presented its case accusing Israel of genocide at the International Court of Justice. South Africa also called on the court to order Israel to cease military operations in Gaza. Israel, which will present its defense on Friday, has vehemently rejected the accusations as, quote, baseless. The court will only deliver an opinion on the genocide allegation, although it is being closely watched. Tembeka Nguk-Kaitobi, a lawyer for the High Court of South Africa, told the ICJ Israel's, quote, genocidal intent was evident, quote, from the way in which this military attack is being conducted. The intent to destroy Gaza has been nurtured at the highest level of the state, he said. Every day there is mounting irreparable loss of life, property, dignity, and humanity for the Palestinian people, Adila Hassim, also representing South Africa, told the court. Nothing will stop the suffering except an order from this court, at which the court is not going to issue, clearly, going in. In its evidence submitted before the hearing, South Africa said Israel's actions were, quote, intended to bring about the destruction of a substantial part of the Palestinian national, racial, and ethnical group. 
Israel will offer its defense on Friday, but has previously said its actions in the Gaza Strip are justified because it is responding to Hamas's deadly attacks on 7th of October. But speaking in court on Thursday, South Africa's Justice Minister Ronald Lamola said that no attack, quote, can provide justification for or defend breaches of the Genocide Convention. Israel is a signatory to the Genocide Convention of 1948, which defines genocide and commits states to prevent it. The ICJ is the United Nations' highest court, based in The Hague and the Netherlands. Its rulings are theoretically legally binding on parties to the ICJ, which include Israel and South Africa, but are not enforceable. In 2022, the court ordered Russia, quote, to immediately suspend military operations in Ukraine, an order that was, of course, ignored. Under international law, genocide is defined as committing one or more acts with the intention to destroy in whole or part a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. Israel's delegation is expected to highlight its right to self-defense under international law this week. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel has no intention of permanently displacing the people of Gaza or occupying the territory. Unlike the International Criminal Court, the ICC, the ICJ cannot prosecute individuals for crimes such as genocide, but its opinions carry weight with the UN and other international institutions. On Wednesday, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa said, quote, Our opposition to the ongoing slaughter of the people of Gaza has driven us as a country to approach the ICJ. Israel President Isaac Herzog called the accusations, quote, atrocious and preposterous. Quote, We will be in the International Court of Justice and we will present proudly our case of using self-defense under humanitarian law. He added, Israel the army was, quote, doing its utmost under extremely complicated circumstances on the ground to make sure that there will be no unintended consequences and no civilian casualties. Zane Dangor, Director General of South Africa's Department of International Relations and Cooperation, told BBC's Africa Daily program that the allegation of genocide against Israel, quote, is a strong allegation, but it is, quote, not one that is unfounded. In Gaza, more than 23,350 people, mostly women and children, have been killed, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. How much credence you can give? It is Hamas, after all. So, yeah, you've got to take that with a grain of salt. Since the war began in the aftermath of Hamas's 7th October attacks on southern Israel, and those attacks, some 1,300 people were killed, many civilians, and about 240 others taken hostage. And it has also been one of the deadliest wars for journalists in particular, with many Mm -hmm. journalists claiming that Israel is specifically targeting them. I agree. I just put a link in the chat from um, Al Jazeera. It's a tweet, and it's from Al Jazeera English. Adila Hassim, a lawyer representing uh, presenting South Africa's Gaza genocide case at the ICI, International Court, I guess, describes Israel's unparalleled and unprecedented killing of Palestinians. So the link is there. I, we, I, I don't know if we can show Al Jazeera without getting a, a copyright violation. Mm. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, All right. The link's there if you want to click on it. Yeah. And of course, there's going to be people asking our current government to take a position on this court case. Mm-hmm. And of course, they're going to fundraise off of whatever is said or not said. So just be prepared for that. All right, kids. Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. All right, kids and cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring, so please share the good word about our show with your peeps and poops. We really appreciate that you do. Thank you very much. And if you would like to be sure that you do not miss an episode, well, you don't have to, thanks to the Ray Girl, because she sponsored our pod page. If you scan that QR code under my chin or use those lovely digits on those lovely hands or your voice prompt to go to podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with the hyphen between each one of those words. If you subscribe there, once we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly into your mailbox. I saw what you did there. Yes, 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 I did. Yes, I, I was very, very disciplined and uncheeky today. <laughs> now, to get cheeky. But it's, it's, unless you spell it M-A-L-E, box, no. then it's a... 
Oh, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> You've got female, <laughs> as RuPaul well, would say. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. Mangina, um, I believe it's called sometimes. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That's, that's just wrong. That's, I agree. That, I that, agree. That, that is that's, wrong. That's just totally no. Um, <laughs> I was at a, I was at Centertown yeah. Pub one night on, on on Canada Day Eve with some friends, having some drinks. And this six foot six, three hundred pound behemoth of a man started yelling about how he was going to. Anyway, you get the picture. And I was like, I'm I'm going to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My buddy's like, Yeah, I think I think you should. It's probably a good idea. Yeah. Now. If you do, however, feel in the mood to smash, hey, we've got some buttons for you to do that with. Make like Kit Elaine and go to the True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page. Please do. Yes. And smash with one, two, or three buttons. We won't judge. Mm -mm. Like, share, subscribe. They're waiting for you. We're getting real, really close to 600. So please, kids and cubs, help us get over that hump. Let's bring we it home. really appreciate it. <laughs> Let's bring it home. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I love it. <laughs> Let's bring home 600 subscribers and get Canada more informed. Oh, by the way, uh, I was inspired yesterday. And um, remember, kids. An informed electorate is the alt-right and the Christo-fascist movement's greatest fear and greatest enemy. Yes, it is. And if you're wondering why it is that they have a particular hate on for our prime minister, it's not so much because he has the last name Trudeau. Mm -hmm. And it's even not so much because he's even a liberal. It's because he's proud to have been a teacher. Mm -hmm. There's a reason they go after academics and scientists and experts. And Ask a scientist teachers. who was in the workforce during the time of Stephen Harper, how muzzled they were. You don't believe me? It's all fact. The receipts are all there. There's a reason they go after these people specifically. Mm -hmm. They are anti-knowledge. Remember that. Remember that. All right. I um, think we should do uh, and mm -hmm. if you want, yes, and if yes, 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 absolutely, yes. And if you would like to really support us, then the squiggly by Mr. Grizzly's head right there brings you to our coffee page where you can leave us a tip because, you know, well, we shake it for tips on this show here. Huh? You like this? Huh? There you go. So if you like to, if you want us to shake it a little harder next time around, we'll drop a little, drop a few loonies in our bucket there and uh, <laughs> we'll help you. So that's coffee, ko ficom slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And uh, we thank you very much for your generosity. Um, there's something I want to discuss with you, uh, Mr. Grizzly, I haven't had a chance yet because I know there's some kits I talked to it about and uh, uh, and I thought well, I would probably talk about it on this show, but we haven't okay. had a chance to talk yet. So, um, But there's a, an initiative I want to speak to you about to see if we, there's a way we can do this uh, uh, in a matter that's uh, clean and ethical. Okay, sounds good. All right. we'll, we'll have a discussion about that. Um, uh, reminders that uh, the yes. 20th, not the 13th, will be the next podcast. So not this weekend, the following weekend. Yes. And please, 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 please tune in tomorrow for a very, 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 very special guest. The biggest score we have landed in terms of politics on mm -hmm. our show. You will be very pleased. Shall we shall we say the name of the person? I think we should, so we can, you know, get people to really tune in instead of just the surprise. Let's let's promote who we're I have I have a page here for this person. Shall I share it? Do you want to show the show the clip? Uh, the clip? Do you have the clip? Uh yeah. I think you send me the clip, but it, this is this is the individual we're gonna bring on the show tomorrow. Well no 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 let, let's no? show the clip. Show the clip first? Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Send me the clip and I will uh, happily show it to the world. I just don't have the clip ready. I just had her, her page uh, open for me here. Oh, no. the clip. Because, she, okay, I saw this clip. Mm -hmm. It was six something in the morning on a Saturday, I believe it was. And immediately I said, I thought, 
I like her. I like how she communicates. I like how she practices politics in full sentences. I like how her plans have substance. And within, and I said, if you grant interviews to Canadian political podcasts, you are invited on ours. And she happened to be up that morning. She wrote me a couple of minutes later. All it took was about 15 minutes. Done. Yeah, we're, we're. so this is, uh, who, you might not, you may or may not be familiar with her face, but we'll tell you who she is after you watch this video clip. It is two minutes and 19 seconds of an adult. Just watch. Like many of you, I have heard the awful healthcare stories coming over the holidays. Viruses like influenza, COVID, RSV, and others are causing New Brunswickers to make trips to the emergency room where they wait for hours in hallways and sometimes worse to receive care. You deserve better than Higgs's hallway healthcare. How did we get here? Well, due to inaction, Higgs has failed to address the crisis in healthcare, leading to short-staffed hospitals and a lack of alternative for New Brunswickers. The government has consistently missed their own healthcare targets. They haven't presented a plan to receive the federal healthcare funding, and Higgs is allowing other provinces to scoop up our healthcare workers with recruitment and retention bonuses that New Brunswick is unwilling to pay while we instead backfill vacancies with higher cost travel nurses. The result, doctors at your local hospital saying don't come. More than a dozen ambulances sitting in wait at the deck, Campbellton and Karakat ER warnings, Stella Medistikent closed on the evenings and weekends, service reductions, Sussex, Sackville, Waterville, the list goes on. And in the end, you aren't able to get the care you need when you need it. So how would we fix it? Well, first, we'd approve more funded ER hours immediately. Second, we'd issue retention payments to critical healthcare professionals to reduce departures and improve morale. Three, get public health communicating on how to reduce the spread of airborne illnesses, including what are people's options for getting the healthcare they need now. We would make tests, respirators, and vaccines available to everyone who needs them. Next, in the medium and longer term, we need to improve access to our after-hours clinics with a better rate structure. Act urgently to set up the collaborative care clinics that this government promised we develop a plan to seriously address long-term care to help move people from hospitals to better care settings. We would support family caregivers, home care, and extramural to keep people out of hospitals and do an overhaul of the compensation models that have been underpinning our healthcare system and its resource allocation. We all need to pitch in to take the pressure off our healthcare workers and our ERs. So please get your vaccinations, boosters, and flu shots. Wear an N95 mask, test, stay home when you're sick, Try the urgent care clinics, your pharmacist, 811, and e-visit. You deserve better than Higgs's hallway health care. So that, my friends, is, um, whoops, I don't know what happened there. We got, we got flip-flopped. That, my friends, is Susan Holt, the uh, leader of the opposition of the party, uh, of the province of New Brunswick. And here is her webpage if you want to take a gander. From Fredericton, New Brunswick, Susan Holt was elected in New Brunswick legislature as the leader of the official opposition and the liberal member for Bathurst East. I'm going to screw up that. Nipisiguit. 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 Yeah. In 2023. So that is our guest tomorrow, folks. Mm -hmm. We're and really excited. We're really excited. And when you hear the federal conservatives say, oh, and their minions going, well, gee, you're not supposed to tip your hand before an election and present your... She just did. Mm -hmm. Oppose and propose. Full sentences, folks. We are very excited about this. So please spread the word and join us tomorrow. And here's a kicker. Not only is Madame Holt joining us tomorrow, for a live show in English. But later on, she will be joining us once again to do it en français. I'll be there, so, but I won't be contributing very much. Because for only that. the second time ever in True North Eager Beaver history will we have an entrevue completely and totally en français for our auditeurs and nos auditrices and nos auditeurs francophones. Because New Brunswick is a fully Officially, officially bilingual province the and only one therefore, in Canada. yes and therefore we are going to be able to present this information to everyone that's right we do the work here at the beaver lodge all right mr grizzly do you have some words of wisdom actually 
this morning I'm a little empty, uh, and I think it's got to do with you know the way I woke up and, and felt bereft, um, felt uh, abandoned and alone, and, and I know I'm not. So I guess my words of wisdom are: even when the the the, the darkness comes, and it does come, know you're not alone. Know that this too shall pass, and it always does. Hold on. It's difficult. I understand. I'm going through it right now. I'll be okay. I'll be fine. Just today is going to be a difficult day. And I might have to do an ASMR later just to talk about it. So if you want to join in, I'd, I haven't picked a time or anything yet, but I'm thinking I will maybe just record something spontaneously and release it later. Maybe I'll do a live one. I don't know. It all depends on where my head is at the end of my work day. Mm-hmm. Mr. Grizzly, I'm sure that a whole damn fam is wrapping you in their arms and giving you a big, big, big hug. Thank you. Please, sir, roll the credits. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. And just a little quick Easter egg for you. Uh, the employment numbers for December were recently put out. Pretty much everything is steady at about 5.8%. Uh, men 25 to 54 had a slight gain in employment. Young women as well, 15 to 24. And the biggest decline was among men aged 55 and older, with more people employed in professional scientific and technical services, healthcare and social assistance, and other services, which includes personal and repair service. I'm going to work on a remix of our, our, our music. See if I can extend the... <laughs> do an extended remix. Just because I was getting into the groove and it's like, it ends. But it, it's an introductory a bumper, right? We can't have a three-minute, five-minute yeah. song. No, but there is a longer version, actually. Uh, that's uh, our, our friend, Paul, uh, Paul Joseph something, who designed that for us. There is a longer version of it uh, that I can uh, get to you. Oh, great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. And uh, we're also working on some other theme music, thanks to another person. So uh, yes, well, we, we won't tell you who. Uh, yes, it's up to that person whether or not we're going to reveal their name. But yes, yeah. it might be a little jazzy. Might be a little jazzy. Might be a little All jazzy. Right. All right, gotta go. See you. Bye.